Today I'm going to be creating an interactive card. This is the Tada Diorama from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to be starting a lot of my ink blending using pattern paper and colored cardstock. Inside the diorama, I'm going to feature this cute little scene with the Happy Mushroom die set. Hi everyone, I'm Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. I would love it if you subscribed, liked this video, and shared it with your friends. I'm going to start off by die cutting my pieces that I want for the inside of my diorama. So for the top of the mushrooms, I'm going to start with ballet slippers cardstock. Then the underneath part that's going to show through the spots of the mushroom are going to be white along with the stem for the mushroom. And for the ferns behind it, I am going to use peacock cardstock. So I die cut all of my pieces out and I am going to add some interest to each of the die cut pieces using some Lawn Fawn ink and a mini blending tool. I started with the top of the mushrooms that were die cut from Ballet Slippers cardstock and to add dimension and highlights to this, I am using raspberry ink. So using that mini blending brush, I started out on the right side just adding a little bit of color and then on the opposite side, I'm going to apply a heavy hand of the raspberry ink. What this does is create a shadow area on my mushroom and I'm going to keep the shadow area to the left hand side. So that is where you're going to see me really adding the ink. If you wanted to add even more shadow in contrast to this, you could bring in a light brown would really help emphasize that. I add a light amount of pressure to the area that I'm going to keep as a highlight so I don't have it to be stark pink there but I don't want to take away that highlight either. So just very light handed going over that highlight area which is typically going to be on the right hand side for both of my mushrooms. Here I went ahead and I'm working on the smaller mushroom. I'm going to do something similar for the stems of my mushrooms. So I did clean off my mat. Now this is just a silicone mat that I'm using to kind of hold my die cuts in place. I also use my finger, but this just helps so it's not sliding all over my slick work surface. Now for the stems, this is white cardstock and I'm adding just a little bit of jellyfish ink to both sides of the stems. For the ferns that I die cut out of peacock cardstock, I'm going to be adding rainforest ink. And this is a beautiful combination. Now, I unfortunately did not end up using the ferns, but I am going to show you what I did do to them so that if this is something you want to try on your card project, you certainly can. I am going to be saving these because these are too pretty to toss. So I added kind of a heavier hand to one side of the fern and just kind of kept it light on the other side. Again, I didn't leave it quite that color of cardstock, just didn't go over it as heavy handed as I did the other side. Starting with a colored cardstock will save you a lot of time ink blending because there's already kind of that color base there. And it's a really great way to add dimension to your die cuts. Now I'm just taking the tops of the mushrooms and I'm adding liquid glue behind them and I'm placing them over the top of that white piece of cardstock that I die cut out. So my spots for my mushrooms are going to be white. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach them to the top of the stems. Now something you can do to your mushrooms to make it a little bit more playful is tilt the top of your mushroom a little bit, just slightly off, so it gives it that kind of whimsical look. So at this point, I didn't know that I wasn't going to use the ferns, so I am going to kind of step them up a little bit. I place them in my splat box, and I am going to splatter on some of the liquid stardust. So they are going to be super sparkly, and it's really pretty on top of that dark ink that I did there with the rainforest ink. I'm also going to take a little bit of white paint. You can use any type of acrylic paint or white paint that you may have. And I mixed it with a little bit of water and I'm flicking that onto my ferns. My paintbrush is kind of a little skewed at the moment. It was separated, so it wasn't flicking very good. So I just kind of wiped off the tip, picked up some more of the paint and added those splatters. And then I'm gonna set them off on the side to dry. For the pieces for my diorama, I have this piece here that's got the three panels and I die cut that from, a, from the shimmer cardstock. This is out of the neutrals pack. I'll be honest, I really wanted paper bag wood grain cardstock, but I don't have any left. I used the last piece a different time. And then I cut the rest of the panels out of the spiffier speckles paper pad. I absolutely love this white paper that has the gold foiled splatters on there. And there's also this kind of blue shade that has the gold splatters as well. 
I set those off on the side and I'm going to work on the grass. So these are the grassy inserts for the diorama that I also die cut out of that white paper that has the gold foil details on it. And I'm adding to the top here some celery ink. So I'm going to add just a light kind of blend of it to the very top, a little bit to the bottom. And then for the bottom, I wanted to add some more contrast. So for this, I'm going to bring in the rainforest ink. And when I blend this on, I'm starting at the bottom. I'm going to blend up towards the top, but get lighter handed with my blending brush. So I'm not applying as much pressure because I still want to keep that celery color up on top, but have it dark below. Now, some of it you may not end up seeing in the finished project, but I still like to be prepared. Once these are done, I'll set them off on the side and I'm going to work on my front panel of the diorama. So these are the two panels I cut from that shimmer cardstock. It's got the score lines on there. So on both panels, I'm just folding them down and reinforcing the fold with my bone folder. Then I'll open both of these panels back up and I'm going to place them next to each other. I have a little cheat sheet that I keep with my diorama so I know how to align this die that looks like a foot. So this is going to create the inserts for my grassy hill. So we're going to place that so that the foot is facing the bigger panel. So it's going to go in that middle section and then the, the foot will point towards the bigger panel. I'm going to hold those in place with post-it tape run that through the die cut machine so it created the inserts for my grassy hills. Before I start attaching anything, I thought I better get my background piece decorated. So this is the piece I die cut out of the Spiffier Speckles paper pack. It's the white paper with the gold foiled splatters on it. And I started out by ink blending celery ink about in the center of this panel. The sides are going to be covered up so I don't need to worry about them as much. Now I wanted to have kind of this glow in the middle and then have it kind of be this dark night sky or this mystical, magical night sky around it. So I'm bringing in Rainforest Ink once again, making sure to still keep that highlight area in the center. I do blend over into the celery ink a little bit so I can help smooth out the transition. Now that wasn't quite dark enough for me, so I am bringing in the Blue Jay ink from Lawn Fawn, and this really makes it very magical. If you're looking for some magical backgrounds, these color combinations are it. Now once I'm done ink blending, I do wipe down all of my pattern paper with a paper towel and that's going to help make those foiled speckles pop a little bit more. I also brought in my frame that I had die cut out. Now this was out of the blue paper from the Spiffier Speckles. This one I'm adding the Blue Jay ink to and I'm not being very concise about my blending, just kind of adding little bits here and there. And I think by doing that it's leaving some lighter areas and really making it look like a nighttime sky. Just be a little gentle when you're blending on pattern paper because it is thinner and you don't want to risk bending it. Now these are two strips that I die cut out of 80 pound white cardstock and I fold it along each of the edges so the die provides the score line for you. And then I'm adding tape runner to each of those ends. I'm going to fold those back down and I'm going to line up the notches. So this is the back piece of my frame and I'm lining up the notch of the frame with the notch of that strip. I'll do the same thing on the other side, adding that tape runner to the ends, fold those down, and then I'll line up these notches. This is what is going to kind of help keep our track in line for our sliding doors. So now that I have that done, I can flip that over, and this is going to be the front of our diorama. I'm bringing in my two panels that I die cut those slots out of. I'm going to add a tape runner to the skinny panel. So I added that there. I'm going to fold that in half and then I'm going to line this up with my side. Now I'm going to take that skinny strip where the adhesive is. I'm going to go all the way over to the edge, but there is going to be a little bit of room at the top and the bottom. I apologize. My head does get in here every now and then because I really wanted to make sure they lined up perfectly and then I can push down. So what's going to happen is we want this so that we can pull these panels out. If you have the fold on that side, then that's gonna, it's not going to work. So you wanna make sure it's kind of that open end on the side. I put tape runner on the skinny part of the other panel, lined that up with the one on the right hand side, pushed down, and now they're perfectly lined up so that I can pull these out. So those panels will just pop right on out. 
Then I can take my grassy hills. I have two of them here, and there are fold lines here as well that the die provided those score lines for. Now with pattern paper, it can be a little tricky again because it is thinner than cardstock. So sometimes I will put my fingernail behind that score line to help me fold that down. Now we'll be able to put these in our inserts on our panel. So this one does take me a little work here and there on the first one to get it started, but you wanna fold your tabs down, put them through those inserts, pull them through, and then you can open up those tabs. So that's going to be your stopper. So I'll do the same thing with my grassy hill for the front slot. Once I get those in and I open those tabs up on the side, there we have our scene is starting to set. Now I can add the front panel to this, which is super easy. I'm going to actually flip this over. So you wanna flip your frame over to the back. I'm also going to flip over my panel with my doors on it. And we're just gonna slide these doors right into that strip that we created or that track that we created. So I will slide that in on the other side. And then sometimes it is nice to slide it over a little further. It'll give you a little bit more wiggle room to play with it. And then you can adjust it afterwards. You can see here, I'm just kind of playing with it to get that to slide in. It's going to slide really smooth once you get it popped in there. It's just a little bit of work to kind of uh, move, maneuver that around to get that into those slots. So now here it is when I pull those doors open, I have this cute little scene to the inside. To finish creating the scene, I am taking my mushrooms and I took some tape runner and I'm adding it to the very bottom of the mushroom. I'm gonna place this on that grassy hill that's furthest in the back and I'm gonna push down. I just wanna make sure that none of the adhesive is exposed, otherwise that's gonna tape everything together, and I don't want that. I just want the tape to be on that grassy hill. Now, I had played around with different ideas as far as getting those ferns added in there. They are super, super pretty with all the sparkle on them and that dark contrasting color. They just kind of took over the scene. I really wanted to make sure that I had that glow in the background, and the ferns were kind of blocking that. So I'm just gonna leave them off. I did go ahead and add my smaller mushroom. That one's gonna be on kind of more of a right-hand side so that they give each other a little bit of space. So I can close this up, kind of give it a practice run. Everything is working perfectly, but I did feel like I was missing something from the scene. So I dug through my stash and I found this adorable little mouse. Now there are lots of different mice that Lawn Fawn has. This one comes from Dandy Day. He just looks like he's gazing off into the distance. Maybe he'll be gazing at the sky or the beautiful mushrooms. And I'm just going to color him with a light gray. It was C4, C2, and C0 out of the Copic markers. And then an R21 for the ears and the belly. I used the coordinating die to die cut up my mouse. And now I'm going to be stamping my sentiment. I die cut a piece of white cardstock using the wavy banners die. It's a nice skinny wavy banner. And I'm going to bring in a sentiment from the wavy banners stamp set. So I'm using a sticky mat. This is actually from My Sweet Petunia that fits inside the Misty. It's going to hold my banner in place while I stamp my sentiment. And I did that using the black licorice ink. I just gently pushed down. I didn't want to risk squishing or distorting my sentiment. So I'll ink it up one more time, and I love how this light grip mat is holding my banner in place. Then I can come in and add my mouse. So I added a little bit of tape runner to the very bottom of the mouse, and I'm going to place that over by the big mushroom. I'm sorry my head gets in the way here. I really wanted to make sure I was placing him where he needed to be. So he's going to be back by that back mushroom or the biggest mushroom in there. So that fits perfectly, and then I can go ahead and add my sentiment. For this, I'm going to put adhesive more towards the bottom of the sentiment because it's going to overlap that bottom piece on the front of my diorama. Again, I don't wanna risk getting adhesive where it's not supposed to be and taping everything shut. So just to the bottom portion of my banner, I'm going to center it down there towards the bottom. Then once that's in place, I can play with my diorama it pulls open perfectly. I have this sweet little scene with the mushrooms and my mouse kind of gazing up into the sky. And this is a great thinking of you card. Using pattern paper and colored cardstock to kind of be the base for my ink blending made this go really quick. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog. 
Thank you so much for joining me today.